الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد so we say uh, الحمد لله رب العالمين who has made us love to witness the month of Ramadan uh, I would say Ramadan Mubarak to all of you may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to worship him sincerely and uh, and uh, help us uh, uh, achieve taqwa in this month, in this blessed month and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq in all of our affairs so this is the uh, second uh, segment of uh, the Ramadan refresher or the daily reminder and uh, this night is actually the first night in the month of Ramadan uh, the year uh, 1441 after Hijra 2020 uh, in the Gregorian calendar so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it a blessed month for all of us uh, so we started uh, last uh, or yesterday by speaking about the verses or quoting the verses from Surah Al-Baqarah that speak about uh, fasting and uh, just uh, one more word on this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks he, he, Allah states clearly the the um, the purpose behind fasting or behind the whole fast of Ramadan is actually taqwa and that means mindfulness we said it's mindfulness of Allah it's connection to Allah it's awareness to Allah it's to feel that you are in the company of Allah and that Allah is with you and watching you all the time so and if a person acts from this from a place like this from a place of awareness it just this is a very fundamental aspect of who we are this is right at the core of our being and and it is meant to uh, fix everything else since it's so central and pivotal and uh, and this is why fasting is uh, is, 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 is essentially although it manifests itself as as an as a physical abstention from food and drink and uh, base desires but it's it's mainly and essentially it is a spiritual experience it is something about the heart it's a it's a self purification it's a heart purification tool so it's the most prof it's probably one of the most profound and this is why it actually the fruit of fast is taqwa is to that means to grow spiritually to transcend to 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 become a better muslim to to the heart purifies and and thus fasting is a very um, extensive exercise in the sense that it not only engages our physical being but it actually purifies our inner dimensions and that's a very profound uh, kind of accomplishment so we are we are to observe fasting and we're going to see some of the hadith that are going to come inshallah along here we'll, we'll explain the spiritual nature of fasting and that we should be mindful of this because if a person fasts and they think their fasting is actually a matter of a, a physical abstention then they are missing out big time on what the fast really is um, so we're going to jump to the hadith right into the hadith here وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله عز وجل كل عمل ابن آدم إلا الصيام فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به والصيام جنة فإذا كان يوم صوم أحدكم فلا يرفث ولا يصحب فإن سابه أحد أو قاتله فليقل إني صائم والذي نفس محمد بيده لخلوف فم الصائم أطيب عند الله من ريح المسك للصائم فرحتان يفرحهما إذا أفطر فرح, فرح, فرح بفطره وإذا لقي ربه فرح بصومه متفق عليه وهذا لفظ رواية, رواية البخاري وفي رواية له يترك طعامه وشرابه وشهوته من أجل الصيام لي وأنا أجزي به والحسنة بعشر أمثالها وفي رواية لمسلم كل عمل ابن آدم يضاعف الحسنة بعشر أمثالها إلى سبعمائة ضعف قال الله تعالى إلا الصوم فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به يدع شهوته وطعامه من أجل للصائم فرحتان يفرحهما فرحة عند فطره وفرحة عند لقاء ربه ولخلوف, ولخ ولخلوف فيه أطيب عند الله من ريح المسك So this hadith is collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim We have uh, one version from Al-Bukhari and we're going to have uh, another wording from Muslim of the same statement or the same tradition 
Uh, on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah says, so this is a divine hadith, it means the Prophet sallallahu narrates it from Allah as a hadith, not as a Qur'an. Allah says, uh, each of the acts or the deeds that a son of Adam performs is for this person, meaning you ultimately, you get the reward. Uh, and, and you get the maximum benefit of it. Allah says, but fast, fa the fast is an exception. It is for me and I reward for it. So there is something special about fast. We know that all of the acts that we do are actually for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is something special about the fast here that Allah says, it is, it is so special to me that I treat it specially. I consider it to be, to be fully for me. And thus, I'm going to give a special reward for it. And Allah says, وَالصِّيَامُ جُنَّةٌ Or maybe this is actually from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi So fasting is a protection, it is a shield. And that means, the scholars say it means it's a shield that protects a person, the fasting person from the hellfire. It's a shield that if the person performs the fast properly, it shields them from evil deeds because if the person is not only fasting physically but their heart is also fasting then as going to come at the end of this hadith basically this will hold the person back from any action that violates the spirit of fasting so in this sense fasting is a protection in every sense of the word so if it's a day on uh, which one of you is fasting so let this person not engage in any foul language in any uh, any kind of argument uh, or improper speech and if a person fights with you or fights with a fasting person or tries to insult them let the fasting per person say i am fasting i am fasting now again the, some of the scholars say you say to the person i am fasting the meaning i'm not going to engage in that because again for me to observe the spirit of fasting Fasting is going to hold me back. It's going to shield me from uh, stooping to a low level of behavior or speech. Uh, but it, so the person could actually say that. Some scholars say that you say that to the to the person in front of you, and some scholars say no. The person sort of reminds themselves. So the person reminds himself or herself that I am fasting, meaning I cannot engage in that. I'm just going to let that go. I'm not. I'm not getting myself into something like this. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, by the one in whose hand my soul is, the smell, the odor that comes from the mouth of a fasting person is, uh, is, is more sweet in the sight of Allah than the smell of musk, meaning the best perfume, the most pleasant smell of perfume. The, the smell that most, pe most people find uh, you know, unpleasant that comes from the mouth of a fasting person uh, it is Allah subhanahu, is sweeter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why? again because maybe we humans with our senses that, that that's what we catch we can catch on which is the 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 the, the sensory experience but with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's much more to this action there's more dimension to this experience and thus it is sweeter in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the fasting person there are two moments of joy one is when the person opens their fast and the second is when the person meets their Lord. Why? Obviously because of the immense reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the fasting person. So this is narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, there's one narration in Al-Bukhari that says what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually adds to this. Um, that the fasting person leaves or abstains from their food, their drink, and their desire for me, meaning for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is speaking here. Fasting is for me and I will reward, I will provide reward for it. And every good deed will be multiplied ten times or tenfold. In a narration that occurs in Muslim, كل عمل ابن آدم يضاعف. Everything son of Adam does, it will be replicated. Will be it will be given, you know, multiple حسنات. الحسنة بعشر مثالها إلى سبعمائة ضعف. Tenfold, up to seven hundred times. 
the reward will be multiplied. Uh, Allah Ta'ala, Allah says, except fast fasting is an exception. It is for me and I will provide reward for it that my servant leaves his or her desire, her food for me. And then the Prophet says, for the fasting person, there are two moments of joy. The one when the person opens their fast and the second when they meet their Lord. And the smell or the odor that comes from the mouth of a fasting person is sweeter or more pleasant with Allah than uh, the smell of the best perfumes or musk. So what does this hadith te uh, teach us? It's actually sort of self-explanatory. It's quite obvious, but it is something that, that we should make our, our ourselves aware of and mindful of as we are going through fasting. That uh, fasting is so special with Allah. And uh, we should make ourselves feel that. So this is not just a piece of information that, yeah, fasting is special with Allah. Okay, good. Well, this means something. Th this means a lot. And it means a lot to us as well. And it, and it has a big impact on our engagement in this fasting. Meaning that you are doing something that is so special in the sight of Allah. And that means Allah is going to reward immensely for it. It means that Allah appreciates it. It means that Allah observes that. And Allah is pleased with that. And that means you should... You should be aware as you are fasting that you are doing something great, something magnificent, something of great value. It's not just a simple engagement. It's not just abstinence from food and drink and desire. It is far more than that. It is such a huge engagement. It is such a great undertaking that you are actually performing now. And thus, the Lord of the world, the creator of the heavens and the earth, Deems, deems this kind of deed so special and so um, and, and so exceptional and you are doing it this is such a profound thing and if you are and I think it takes a long time even just to you, you can actually just keep thinking about that for such a long time and, and let it sink in and obviously this should not lead to us you know being arrogant or feeling good about ourselves or having any kind of guarantee that our fast is going to be accepted because we don't know but we it should just make us try to do our best as we are fasting that we are supposed to preserve our fast do it in the best way possible the way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should observe this spirit of fasting during this month so this is and this is why when a person tries to insult you or tries to uh, pick an argument with you you just basically say I'm not I can't afford to engage in something like that. Listen, I, I'm, I'm already, I have taken a great undertaking. I'm already engaged with it. And I, I, can't, I can't ruin that for any reason. Even if it's my own ego. To, even for, for me to sort of defend myself and make myself right. So it, it is such a huge thing. I mean, this, this piece of information is so profound. If you let it sink in and we sort of let it form, let it shape our, our sense of being and our experience of of fasting and and the fact that we humans find this uh, this smell that comes out of the mouth of a fasting person as unpleasant yet uh, we, we we are sort of we, we we are in a prison we are in a cage which is our sen our five senses our sensory system so we don't have access to the full reality of things and and where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything we know now that this smell is more pleasant with Allah than the, the than the best kind of smell on earth what does that mean that means here we trust what Allah tells us about this experience and and what we might find unpleasant we should put it in context that hey there is much more goodness in this experience even though we find one aspect of it or one side of it to have an maybe an uns, un, unpleasant experience which is sometimes the order that comes out of the mouth of the fasting person and Allah the the narration of Sahih Muslim says that Allah uh, multiplies the reward of every good deed up to 10 times and up to 700 times but fasting is even more than that it's special and, and that, that tells you hey, that you can't even imagine you can't you can't even think of how much reward Allah SWT is going to give the fasting person. So this is such a great uh, news from from the Prophet ﷺ that he's narrating from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And again, since we are fasting Ramadan and we, we we're praying our tarawih and doing most of the things uh, at home, 
this Ramadan this year under the lockdown, then this comes as a great source of solace and encouragement that you are not alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching, Allah is obser observing and Allah is with you in every moment as you do these things, as long as you do them with a pure heart. Uh, you do them from a place of sincerity and true devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should live up, that means we should lift ourselves up to this, to the level of fasting, the, to this level of spirit of, fa of the fast, of siyam, and, and, and it's such a high and lofty place to be in, and we are supposed to uh, carry ourselves accordingly. Um, I think it's enough with this hadith, inshallah ta'ala. So from now, inshallah, from to starting tomorrow, the, um, uh, the our meeting is going to be about half an hour before iftar. So roughly speaking, let's say uh, tomorrow, most likely we will start about 7.30 p.m. GTA time, East time in North America, inshallah ta'ala. So you're invited again to join us. We are going to... Um, we still were going to for the the most for the most part we're going to cover uh, Kitab al Adab from Riyadh al Salihin, the book of manners and etiquettes from Riyadh al Salihin. But for the first few days, we want to give you this Ramadan refresher, the, uh, some of the etiquettes, some of the rulings that pertain to fasting and Ramadan and other issues that pertain to our worship during the blessed month of Ramadan. Again, Ramadan Mubarak. May Allah subhanahu wa taala accept from all of us. May Allah give us tawfiq uh, and guidance to uh, utilize this month and uh, uh, behave externally and internally in ways that bring us bring in ways that brings us that bring us closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah grant us sincerity in all of these uh, efforts jazakumullahu khairan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in